G'day, I'm Gary Pike. Spring bugs. The greatest thing, in my opinion, that it has ever been added to Cartoon Animator. Cartoon Animator 5 introduced spring bones and from the second I saw it, blew my mind. And I'll tell you why. If you've got a character that's got flowing hair, a dress, accessories that move and bounce around, or even a prop that has parts that move and bounce around. Normally, with previous versions of Cartoon Animator 5, you had to keyframe manually all those movements. It could be done, it could be done effectively, but it was tedious and time consuming. With the introduction of spring bones, once you have them set up in your character, you can control exactly how they move, but once you've got it set up, never touch them again, go ahead with your animation and all these wonderful little moving parts within your animation will work on their own, automatically, smooth, dynamic animation that makes a world of difference to your animations like this. Okay, so in that animation there, what I did, I took one of my bonkers characters, the elephant from Cartoon Animator 4, brought it into Cartoon Animator 5, and I was then able to just apply spring bones to it. Applying them is really quite an easy process. Uh, whether you're setting up a, a character from the get-go, or you've already got an existing character and you want to add more spring bones to it, you can do it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll take you over to Cartoon Animator now, and I'll show you one of my characters and I'll just take you through the spring bones, explain how they work, and then I'll give you a link to where you can get some more information. Let's go. Okay, we've got Anita on screen and we want to have a look at her spring bone settings. So if we go down to the spring editor, I'll make sure up the top here that we've got the face bones showing. I've created a group called hair. Inside that, we've got all these individual bones that I've set up for the spring bones to be applied to. Now, you'll notice that some of the spring bones are gray and some of the spring bones are orange. The ones that are orange are the ones that are affected by the bounciness, speed, gravity, and limit angle properties of the spring bones. The other ones will remain static. They're like an anchor point. Okay? So, to show you how the spring bones work, if you haven't seen them before, if we click preview and grab Anita's head and move it around, you can see as we move the head around, we don't have to animate the hair. The hair just automatically does its own thing. And according to the properties that we set for it, will depend how springy it is, how much. Uh, how smooth it is, how fast it is, how slow it is. You can add all your properties to that or you can just add presets. So, going back to the face, bring up all the bones. The easiest thing for me to do here to show you how to apply bones is to remove some of the bones that are already here and put them back in and you can see the process. I also explain all this process in my uh, rigging tutorial that I've written and if you want a copy of that, you just go to my Facebook page, send me a private message and ask me for that and I'll send it to you. Okay, so if we take these bones here, let's go into the bone editor. Okay, if we select that bone there and delete it, get rid of it. Okay, all right. So this sprite here, where are we? Let's expand the head. This sprite here, we will, there we go, this one. This, this is the sprite that we're working with here, which is hair two, okay? In fact, what I'll do just for now, I'll get rid of a couple of the other hair sprites around it so that we're not focusing on those. We're just focusing on the hair sprite that we need, let's, okay. So, if we come back up to hair two, okay? That's the sprite that we're working on. There, you can tell because the pivot bone point is selected. What we're going to do is we're going to add some bones to just this sprite, and then we'll turn some of those bones into spring bones, okay? So, with the root bone pivot point selected, just click Add Bone, 
and then start to move along and just add bones wherever you want to add bones. Okay, uh, once I hit escape, that ends the process. So there's, there's new bones that we've added into the hair. That's all fine, but what we need to do is to tell Cartoon Animator that we want those bones or some of those bones to be affected by the properties of spring bones. So open up your spring bone editor. Okay, here we are. Now we're going, we'll put it into the hair group. If you want, you can select that and you can create all your own individual groups so that different parts of the body will have different parameters. But for now, we'll just add it into the hair group. Okay, now you select which bone you want to start from. And when we do that, we're going to select that bone and any bones after it will also automatically be selected. So if we select this bone, they're all going to be selected. If I select this bone, only these bones will be selected. Now here's something that's really important when you're applying spring bones. This was something that it actually took me quite a while to realize. And once I realized that I went, oh my gosh, it's so obvious. When you apply spring bones, do not apply it to the very first bone in the group because all that's going to do is to make the entire sprite wobble about and it looks dumb in, because this part here that's supposed to be connected to her head is going to start to wobble around. We don't want that. We want that to be the anchor point. We want the end of the hair to wobble around. So generally what I can do, and you can see what I've done down here, is I really only select about the last two bones in the uh, additional bones that I've added. So therefore, if we select that bone, that's the bone that we've here to, in brackets, to, that's the bone that we want to apply the spring bone to. Now, if I just select assign to group, what's going to happen at the moment is that's going to assign every bone to the group. I think that's going to be changed in Cartoon Animator in a new update. But for now, here's what you do. Once you work out which bone you want by clicking it, okay, when you come over here to your layer order, you'll see the one that you just clicked is now highlighted. Okay. Left click it, select it. Now you've selected only that bone. So now when I click assign to group in a second, you're gonna find that this bone, this bone, and this pivot point are all going to be added to the group and made spring bones. So when I click it, assign to group, now this bone and this bone will be affected and this pivot point will be affected by the spring bones. So if I hit select preview, grab the head, and if we move the head, as you can see, now the spring bones affect that, but not the root of the hair, which we don't want to move. Or at least I don't want it to move. We want that to stay nice and still. Um, while we're in here, here's, here's a couple of interesting things. If we go back and select the face, because we've got this group selected, any presets that we select are going to affect the entire group. Okay. So the default is usually perfect. I, I very rarely change from the default. I think that the default works lovely. But play around with your other presets because if you click light, for instance, that's gonna take all the gravity out of the hair, okay? And see, as you can see, the gravity's gone out of the hair. When we select preview now, <laughs> the hair is all gonna fly up in the air. You can do this in real time too with preview selected. So that's that's really cool that you can see instant results. Um, now, if uh, Anita's hair was really wet, then we reduce, we increase the gravity on it and you're going to get it all flopping down like that, which is fantastic. Then you can select slow. Now what's gonna happen when you move the hair around, it's only going to move nice and slow. If you select fast, now when you do it, it's going to bounce nice and fast. So play around with your presets, play around with your um, properties for all your different spring bone settings. And there's there's heaps that you can play with. You can customize it down to, every, to the finest detail. And don't forget, put all your bones in separate groups. So you put your hair in one group, then you might have the dress in another group, then you might have a ponytail in a whole separate group so that all the different parts of the body will move at different times you can get some absolutely incredible results from spring bones 
Uh, I am the poster boy for spring bones. They are the coolest thing to come in cartoon animator fight. So thanks for watching. I hope this video has helped. If you've got any questions, you know what to do. Send me a message. I'm always here to help. We'll make some more videos. We'll get learning cartoon animator. Have a great day. Bye-bye.